anything. Meanwhile, they're shutting down entire towns and interrogating innocent Americans. It's total fraud. Here again, we have the police state just overstepping their authority, and people are just kind of letting them because, you know, it's keeping us safe from, you know, from all of these dangerous guns and criminals. Meanwhile, in Massachusetts, they're trying to further toughen their gun laws by passing a new bill today. This one is going to give police chiefs the authority to decide who can purchase a rifle or shotgun. Now, House lawmakers overrode objection, objections from gun rights advocates there in the state Senate. They opposed the measure, worrying that police chiefs could abuse their authority to deny firearms to law-abiding citizens. Now, the measure broadens the authority of police. They were already allowed to deny sales of handguns to people who failed background checks. Well, this new measure gives a police chief 90 days to petition a court to deny a firearms ID card to someone the chief believes to be unfit. So now the chief gets to decide. And of course, there's no need to worry about any corrupt police chiefs abusing their power, right? I mean, they certainly wouldn't do that there in the corrupt Albuquerque Police Department. Or of course, we have the six Philadelphia police officers who were charged today with armed robbery, kidnapping, and drug dealing, part of a huge ring. But, you know, no corruption there. The police chief should be given the authority to decide who can go ahead and exercise their Second Amendment right to protect themselves, right? And old Bloomberg, he just won't give up. He just wants your guns, and he continues to promote it in the most awful way possible. Here is his latest gun grab ad that completely backfired. It's my ex. Trying to break in. Do you have a restraining order? This is my yes, house. Please, my, my son family. is here. Open the door. I need to stay calm. He just broke in the door. You need to come now. Get away from him. Hey. Put him down. Get out of here. Get out of here. I'm taking him. So ridiculously out of touch, Bloomberg. This video basically makes the case for having a gun in the home to protect yourself and your child. Having a gun in the home would have been the only thing that would have put that woman on level playing field with her estranged husband. And also, Bloomberg's ad went so far as to show her making a 911 call. But as we all know, when seconds count, police will take minutes to get there. But, you know, here we go. We're just trying to propagate to the American people and convince them that it would have been better if there were just no guns at all. Because then this guy, you know, he couldn't have come in and, and beat her, you know, and slapped her around and then stole the baby, right? No, it's going to be the gun that's the only thing that's going to put that woman on level playing field with the man. He probably would never have even attempted to enter the home if he knew that she was trained and ready to fire. And if he still tried to attempt it at that point, he would have just been blasted before he even made it through the door. So thank you, Bloomberg, for uh, making the case to protect our Second Amendment right. Of course so ridiculously out of touch. But here we go. What is a police state without turning everyone here in America into potential criminals? And of course, that's why they're wanting to track us all. But New Zealand parents were really surprised to find out that their children were going to be treated like prisoners are in a jail. They were upset to learn that their children were going to be given chipped bracelets to track their behavior. They weren't even notified about it. They just found out about it via the minutes from a PTA meeting. Now, under this proposal, the devices locked to kids' arms, and they would allow teachers to use portable scanners in order to add reward points to a student's good behavior. And they, they would, of course, be stored on a database. So here, it's they're making these bracelets look really cool, and they're giving these kids points for being tracked, students are going to be rewarded the po points for doing something that the teachers determined to be positive, and then incentives would be enhanced with the promise of prizes for reaching a certain amount of points. Now, the school claims that the devices wouldn't have any GPS trackers. Obviously, parents were outraged at the scheme, which is otherwise literally employed on prisoners to monitor their whereabouts and, of course, activities of offenders who are on parole. <laughs>
So, but now they're going to make it cool and clever for the kids. Maybe they can get some of those tracking bracelets for the uh, people who are entering our country illegally. But it's not just New Zealand. Of course, we've reported on schools here in the U.S. attempting this same type of tracking with the RFID cards, um, but also trying to use biometric iris scans when kids board the buses here. It is so ridiculous, they are literally trying to turn us into a permanent slave class. And of course, one way to do that is to use these tracking devices to attach us to our debt. Currently, Americans are attached to their debt via their social security number, but people who are in this country illegally are finding ways to skirt this debt slavery. Coming up, we're gonna be speaking with a whistleblower. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered with the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Secure your fluoride shield at InfoWarsLife.com today. Well, we were contacted by email with someone who has been working as a car salesman for quite some time, very concerned about the fraud that he sees going on with illegal aliens. Now, of course, there's a lot of money to be made every time a loan happens, whether it's a home loan or a car loan. People are making fees. People are selling cars. They will go around the laws until they can change the laws. Now, what he told us, he says he's been seeing large finance companies giving auto loans to illegals routinely. I see them try five to ten Social Security numbers until one works, and it's good enough to buy a car and get funded. I see this as fraud, period. Well, so do we. So we wanted to get his details and let you know what's going on in just this one area. Now, we vetted him. We know that he does work in the car industry in Chicago. He wishes, for obvious reasons, to remain anonymous and to have his voice disguised. So we welcome him now. So could you tell us a little bit about what you've seen, the types of fraud that you've seen working at car dealerships? Sure. Um, things I've seen would be, um, you know, these uh, basically you know, people who are here um, apparently um, in some illegal fashion or even possibly semi-illegal fashion using um, what we refer to as Mexican driver's license as a proper term would be matriculous. Um, they've got those that they use as their IDs, but then to get a car loan, you know, you've got to have a, a valid social security number and then have some type of credit that's built up to use so that you can secure the loan from the banks. Now, what I've seen is um, people using multiple social security numbers to attempt to get these loans. And, you know, um, predominantly, you know, I, I'm of, uh, you know, European descent, so a lot of the customers that come in they will avoid me. And um, when they're using these types of IDs, you know, I look for someone who looks sort of Hispanic descent to, to speak with. And when they do, you know, sometimes they'll be speaking in English. And I've heard plenty of times in the manager's office of people talking about it. But, you know, they'll come back with social security numbers and tell a customer, 
Right. Um, well, that one says that you're dead, that you're deceased. Okay. Or things will be like, let's say the person on the Social Security number was born in 1959, but this person's ID says they were born in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So they can't use those. And um, so, you know, they'll go through a handful of them until they actually can, you know, come up with one that the banks will accept. So the listeners know what a matricula is. This is something that's a form of identification offered by the Mexican embassy to Mexican citizens who are residing in another country. They've been doing that for some time. As a matter of fact, it was about 10 years ago, there was a bill that they tried to get through Congress that was defeated in 2004, I believe, that was going to stop people from using that to open bank accounts. But of course, the banks want to see this happen. They're wiring $18 billion a year out of the country, so they wanted this to happen. They want to see these automobile loans happen. Now, if somebody's a legal resident, there's a path for them to get an automobile loan, isn't there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, they, you know, they, there is a definite way for them to be able to do that. I, I've even had people who are here on visas in a legal fashion, you know, from other countries like China or Japan. And, you know, they are given the ability to do it. And the way they have to do it is, you know, the loans can only be as good for as long as the visa is good for. Um, but that's being done in, you know, a proper fashion. And the idea and that the um, temporary Social Security number that they use, you know, it, it will be identified to them specifically. The one thing that I've seen in these other situations would be, where, you know, you know, I don't know, many people probably haven't seen an actual credit report, but when you're looking at it, it will show aliases or other names that have been used with that particular social security number. And when, you know, you see a huge list of different names that pop up on them, you know, it's a very easy way to say, yeah, obviously this one's one that's getting passed around among, you know, numerous different people. It seems to me like if they don't have a social security number, if they're not here on a visa, that the employer is probably not paying the matching social security fees either, which is about half of your social security amount. If you are an employee, you see social security coming out. Of course, there's no deduction for that. That's a direct tax and it hits people at the poorest end of the spectrum because it, it cuts off after you reach a certain level of income. But you're paying seven and a half percent of a tax and your employer is paying another 7.5%, but the employers who don't have legal employees are seeing that as a financial advantage, wouldn't you say? Most definitely. Um, you know, it, it, that would be something that's real easy for them to be able to skip by. And, you know, as many different things as I've seen them be able to get away with doing, um, you know, a lot of Americans work real hard for, for their money and pay the taxes and, you know, work real hard to maintain good credit so that they can, you know, be able to secure these loans. And, you know, I watch this stuff happen, you know, probably a few times a week at least that I've seen. And I've been doing this for well over 10 years now. And, you know, it's just, you know, at a certain point, I've, I've had enough to a point where I figured I needed to bring this to people's attention, especially in light of things that are going on currently. I think what we're seeing here are businesses and banks who are essentially violating the law, ignoring the law until they can change the law. There are some of the organizations like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce that are pushing the GOP to ram through this amnesty program. They're going to continue to do this even if they have to commit fraud. They'd rather not put themselves out there and commit fraud, but certainly that's not going to bar them. We've seen some of the largest banks like HSBC and many others brought up just recently on massive money laundering that's been going on with drug cartels in Central and South America. So they're not going to stop doing this part of the business. And I guess the other thing that bothers me is the selective enforcement that we see from law enforcement. You mentioned the fact that these matriculas are referred to often as Mexican driver's licenses. And I can tell you that both my son in North Carolina and I here in Texas have both been hit from behind by someone who didn't speak English, had a Mexican driver's license, and the police essentially brought no charges to them, did not test them for driving under, under the influence or intoxication, just let them go. It looks like they're treating them as if they had some kind of diplomatic immunity, like they were some kind of uh, ambassador from uh, the UN or something. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. You know, I, I've heard of similar stories with customers that I've had come in 
um, similar types of things. Uh, I've got a sister, a similar type of a situation. And so, yeah, I, those are things I've definitely seen. I'm sure more and more people who hear about these things can think about, you know, situations they know of. And, you know, it's been a pretty broad spectrum. You know, I'm, I'm not in the, the Texas area. I'm in the, the suburbs of Chicago. And, you know, so I'm pretty far away from the border. And, um, even 